Welcome back. We're looking through the newspaper front pages as they come in with Labour's former Justice Minister Shahid Malik and the Reuters Breaking Views journalist Margaret Doyle. And we're going to start this half with the Financial Times and it is leading with uh, George Osborne holding firm on police cutbacks and we've touched on this already but um, the Tories are saying that, that the, the plans to cut back funding for the policing is go are going to go ahead. There's some dispute over what both Labour and the Conservatives say is the actual amount of cuts. Sure. But they say it's not, not going to reduce visible policing on the streets. Well, there's no dispute what Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary say. And they say that by 2015, there'll be a 16,000 reduction in police officers, uh, uniformed police officers. KPMG did an independent study which said there'd be 18,000 reduction. And I think even Boris Johnson, who, God bless him, slips up and tells the truth every now and then, then has to backtrack under pressure from Cameron. And even he recognises that this really goes against common sense. And I think on this one, this, this is the one area where David Cameron and George Osborne are looking wanting in a profound way, because there is no logic in what they're saying. And, you know, a whole series but, of independent bodies... But money can't just, them up. can't just be put into the police force sort of merrily... Or endlessly and endlessly and up it's not about putting, forever. It's not about it putting it in, this is about it cutting it. This is about a 20% cut Shahid, between you, now and 2015. You can't possibly say that there aren't huge inefficiencies in the police. I mean, the police has been memorably described as the last yes. great unreformed public service. You know, there are working practices, everything. I mean, they're, they're, it, this is, they well, just, not, they just don't I'm work in a if, in if a, a Labour government way. were in power, if the Labour government were in power, there would be cuts to the police service. There'd be circa 12%, which is what Her Majesty's Inspectorate said you could get away with without affecting the numbers of police officers. But what, the cuts at 20% will mean between 16 and 18,000 less police officers. So it's not about putting more money in, it's actually about not cutting money. And if you, if you speak, I mean, you talked about, you know, Robert Peel and getting Bobby's back on the beat. Yeah. I mean, as an MP, that's the one thing that everybody said to me. I mean, the Labour government hasn't got everything right, but there was record laws in crime and 17,000 extra police officers between 97 and 2010. Although we now have a huge deficit. Well, we have a huge deficit uh, because of the global economic financial downturn as does every economy in the world. But the difference is, the way that we see, we're, we're, it's, un, it's, it's pain that we don't need. The belief within Labour circles is that you can cut this deficit uh, over a longer period, you cut, cut it less deep, you cut it more cleverly. Well, well, well the there Tories is, want there to is, do it There is a quicker. huge debate, but I mean, one of the other things that George Osborne was sort of talking about is, you know, we can't, we can't sort of resile on our austerity plans and the point that he continually makes is that Britain is borrowing at incredibly competitive rates. Britain's borrowing rate is around two and a half percent, percent yeah. for 10 years. I mean, I, I'm, I'm amazed. Who is lending to the UK government for 10 years at two and a half percent? I mean, it's, it's an amazing deal given that inflation is higher than two and a half percent. So, uh, I mean, Britain, Britain is in a very fortunate position and I guess George Osborne, you know, understandably doesn't want to jeopardise that. But I, th I not think it'd be a mistake. Yeah, it'd be a mistake just to look at the police. You've got to look at the, the, the prison service and at probation service as well, where you're going to see circa 20% cuts in each. The prison population was due to increase to 100,000. It's been capped at 85. And you're going to have some serious problems in community sentencing because if probation services cut by 20%, courts are not going to be able to give community sentences. So well, the police is also on the front of, of The Guardian. Let's quickly have a look at that. We've only got about a minute or so left. Okay. Um, the Guardian, uh, it says that it's too few, too slow, too timid. It's uh, suggesting that the Tories attack the police over the riots. I don't know if that was necessarily the impression that everybody got today. Well, I, th I think Cameron definitely did feel... I, I think he did say that the policing, the police got it wrong. That they weren't that, that they weren't hardline enough, and that he's now step now that he's back, that approach is changing. Also, let's quickly move on to the Express and the Star, who've both got a very similar front page, the same story. Um, this is about um, a young girl called Chelsea Ives, who uh, they're calling her an Olympic girl star. She um, is an, apparently one of the Olympic ambassadors, yeah. uh, and she was uh, charged with writing after her mother saw her hurling bricks. At TV. Well, her mother is claiming to be this heroine, you know, who said, "Oh, you know, I was only doing what what a." parent ought to do but I would like to wait and hear a little bit more about what mm -hmm. exactly is going on here because this may well be the same case of a girl who is homeless and who's estranged from her mother and then you have to ask well actually where was the mother <laughs> when well, she yes. needed her mm -hmm. indeed and the, that story also on the front of the star Olympic athlete hurled bricks 
at riot police and also suggesting that she was handed in by her mum. I'm mm. sure, as you say... That, and um, she, she's alleged to have said it was the best day ever, which, if it's true, then that says a lot about uh, some parts of our country and mm -hmm. just how, uh, how problemed and troubled they are. But I, I think it we'd be remiss if we didn't just speak for just a few seconds about Tariq Jahan, somebody who you've been speaking about Indeed. all day. What an inspirational fellow. I mean, his comments have been of a different world. This I is mean, the father of... The father of, the... of, uh, of Haroon Jahan. Who's who, appealed for Khan. Who's one of the, the, the three... The, the three Birmingham, Birmingham, Birmingham. lads. I yeah. mean, just incredible. And he really is an incredible role model and an inspirational character. And I've no doubt that his individual voice uh, really uh, allowed Birmingham to try to come to terms with some of the tensions that are there now and will continue for some time. Well, his, his, his very quiet voice seems to have risen above yeah. a lot of the shouting that we've heard over the last few days. I mean, and of course, someone who's uh, emerged with a great deal of dignity absolutely. out of it. And of course, the, the Malaysian uh, young man, uh, Ashraf Rosli, who uh, said that he felt sorry for his attackers. And I think that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's it, a that terrible, takes some doing. terrible video, it wasn't yeah. it? I mean, it does. It's Margaret and Shahid, we're out of time, but thank you both very much thank for you. taking us through thank the uh, early evening paper.